1993, Americans watched breathlessly as FBI agents faced off with a self-proclaimed religious prophet and his armed followers in Central Texas. This was the Waco siege, a weeks-long standoff between the federal government In 1993, Americans watched breathlessly as FBI agents faced off with a self-proclaimed religious prophet and his armed followers in Central Texas. This was the Waco siege, a weeks-long standoff between the federal government and a religious group known as the Branch Davidians. Established by leader Victor Hautef, the Branch Davidians are a Christian sect, an offshoot of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, with a literal interpretation of the Bible's prophecies. Haltef and a group of his followers settled near Waco, Texas in 1935. Branch Davidians believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ and a day of judgment in which God will punish the wicked and reward the good. In preparation for Judgment Day, the Branch Davidians isolated themselves from the outside world in their commune near Waco, confined to a 77-acre compound called the Mount Carmel Center, they established their own way of life. The group had gone through various divisions and changes in leadership before it was taken over by a charismatic Bible teacher named David Koresh in 1990. Koresh was a self-proclaimed prophet and believed that he was appointed by God to bring about the end of the world. Unlike his predecessors, Koresh practiced polygamy, taking a number of underage followers as wives who bore his children. He also collected guns and ammunition in preparation for the coming apocalypse. Word eventually reached federal authorities that the cult was illegally stockpiling weapons. On February 28, 1993, agents from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms arrived at the Mount Carmel compound armed with search warrants for the property and an arrest warrant for Koresh. Gunfire erupted, although it's unclear which side started it. At the end of the two-hour standoff, four ATF agents and six Branch Davidians were dead. The FBI intervened. Nearly 900 members of law enforcement descended on the compound, including Texas Rangers, Army personnel, and National Guardsmen. For weeks, FBI negotiators bargained with Koresh, bringing in supplies and allowing him to sermonize on the radio in a bid to get him to surrender. Though he allowed a number of Davidians to leave, Koresh displayed no signs of turning himself in. Agents then tried hardball tactics. They turned off the electricity blasted loud music, and flashed harsh spotlights into the compound's windows. That didn't work either. After a 51-day standoff, Attorney General Janet Reno gave the FBI the green light to raid Mount Carmel. On April 19, 1993, tanks rolled in and punched holes in its walls and deposited nearly 400 canisters of tear gas inside the building. Several hours later, a fire broke out. This far out in the country without fire hydrants, you have to haul all of your water. It's just a, a very bad scenario here at this point. Winds fanned the flames and reduced the entire property to ash within an hour. Around 80 Branch Davidians died, including David Koresh and 25 children. While most died from fire and smoke inhalation, two members were found with fatal bullet wounds to the head. Four federal agents were also killed during that siege. Several months later, a federal grand jury indicted 12 of the surviving Branch Davidians for unlawful possession of firearms and aiding the murder of federal officers. Many believe the government's actions were overly aggressive and maybe even illegal. The raid drew sharp public criticism and controversy swirled over whether or not federal agents started the fire and shot the Branch Davidians. At the center of the storm was Janet Reno, who issued the final order to raid the compound. In 1999, she appointed independent counsel John Danforth to investigate the incident. Danforth concluded that the agents were not responsible and placed the blame squarely on Koresh and his followers for setting the blaze and shooting themselves in order to fulfill their apocalyptic prophecy. The investigation failed to satisfy critics who, to this day, believe in conspiracy theories of a federal cover-up. For some right-wing extremist groups and patriot militias, Waco was further evidence of a government willing to use its power against its own people. One of these extremists was a 24-year-old disgruntled Army veteran named Timothy McVeigh. 
Radicalized by Waco, McVeigh would retaliate for what he saw as the injustices of the Waco siege by bombing a federal building in Oklahoma City exactly two years to the day of the siege at Mount Carmel. 